ಜನ ಅಭ್ಯಮಾನ ಸ್ವಂತ್ಯ ಉತ್ತಯ ನಿಸಮ್ಯ ನಿಸ್ವಾನ ಸ್ವಂತ್ಯ ಉತ್ತಯ ನಿಸಮ್ಯ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ಯೋರ್ಮೋಹ್ಯಮತ್ತರ ಅಪ್ಪಾಯೋರ್ಮೋಹ್ಯಮಂತರ ಸ್ನಾತ್ಯಸ್ಥಾಸ್ಯಸೌತ್ಸವಾಭ್ಯಮಾನ ಉತ್ಥಾಯ ನಿಸ್ಯ ನಿಸ್ವನ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ಯೋರ್ಭ್ಯಂತರ asnantya taking meals eka sam tat that apashya abandoning sa utsavaha joyfully abhyamayana abhya abhyajya mana being massaged akrita not finishing upaman janaha their bathing swapnatya sleeping utaya getting up nisamya having heard niswanam the loud sounds prapayantya giving milk arbyam to the infant apoya putting aside mataraha mothers translation those who are taking their meals abandon them others went out without finishing their baths or massages women who were sleeping at once rose when they heard the commotion and mothers breastfeeding their infants simply put them aside <laughs> so krishna is entering in mathura and this is what 
is happening. So, and Balaram Krishna and Balaram coming in. Next verse, 27. The lotus-eyed Lord, smiling as he recalled his bold pastimes, captivated those ladies' minds with his glances. He walked with the gait of a lordly elephant in rut, creating a festival for their eyes with his transcendental body, which is the source of pleasure for the divine goddesses of fortune. Mm. So now Krishna is responding to their bhakti by exhibiting some of his transcendental qualities. <laughs> the ladies of Mathura had repeatedly heard about Krishna, and thus, as soon as they saw him, their hearts melted. They felt honored that he was sprinkling upon them the nectar of his glances and broad smiles. Taking him into their hearts through their eyes, they embraced him, the embodiment of all ecstasy, and as their bodily hair stood on end, O subduer of the enemies, they forgot their unlimited distress caused by his absence. So, just by seeing Krishna, they took Krishna into their hearts, and just simply by that glance, they were experiencing transcendental ecstasy. Hmm. Their lotus faces blooming with affection. The ladies who had climbed to the roofs of the mansions rained down showers of flowers upon Lord Balaram and Lord Krishna. Now they're responding to, the, to his presence by offering with such love and affection and emotion such beautiful flowers, pouring flowers down like a rain. Brahmins standing along the way honored the two lords with presentations of yogurt, unbroken barley corns, pots full of water, garlands, fragrant substances such as sandalwood paste and other items of worship. This is the way to great, greet a great personality by offering the best of what you have. The women of Mathura exclaimed, Oh! What severe austerities the gopis must have performed to be able to regularly see Krishna and Balaram, who are the greatest source of pleasure for all mankind. So now the women of Mathura are just feeling some appreciation for what the gopis have ever been experiencing to see Krishna all the time. Seeing a washerman approaching who had been dyeing some clothes, Krishna asked him for the finest laundered garments he had. Hmm. Lord Krishna said, Please give suitable garments to the two of us, who certainly deserve them. <laughs> Krishna is saying, We deserve it, because <laughs> we're God. <laughs> so, if you grant this charity, you will undoubtedly receive the greatest benefit. So, we deserve it, but if you give it, you benefit. <laughs> That's what he's saying. So it's your it's your benefit if you can simply respond to my re humble request. Thus requested by the Supreme Lord, who is perfectly complete in all respects, that arrogant servant of the king became angry and replied insultingly, Whoa! He had a chance and he blew it. The washerman said, You impotent boys, you're accustomed to roaming the mountains and forests. Couldn't recognize who they were. And yet you would dare put on such clothes as these? These are the king's possessions you are asking for. Such an insult to me and the king. You're going beyond your position here. He's blinded. Can't see. Fools. Now he criticizes the Lord. Calls the Lord, calls the Krishna and Balarams fools. Get out of here. Quickly. Ah, what offense. Can you imagine what offense is happening here? Don't beg like this if you want to stay alive. Whoa. Now he's threatening him. When someone is too bold, the king's men arrest him and kill him and take all his property. Wow. You want to, you just want to punch him just by hearing this. Boom, what a rascal. As the washerman thus spoke brazenly, the son of Devaki became angry. 
Krishna is angry. Uh oh. The whole universe is being affected. And then merely with his fingertips, not the fingers, the tips of the fingers, he separated the man's head from his body. Jai! <laughs> Got what he deserved. The washerman's assistants all dropped their bundles of clothes and fled down the road, scattering in all directions. Lord Krishna then took the clothes. Not at all. Might as well get something from this. <laughs> Krishna Balaram put on pairs of garments that especially pleased them. And then Krishna distributed the remaining clothes among the cowherd boys, leaving some of them scattered all over the ground. <laughs> we, don't, we don't really need them, but we'll take them. Thereupon a weaver came forward and, feeling affection for the Lord, nicely adorned their attire with cloth ornaments of various colors. Now, the, the weaver... He's not, he's actually seeing something transcendental happen. So now he comes and offers something very nice, some ornaments. Purport. Srila Jiva Goswami explains that the weaver adorned the Lord with cloth ornaments and earrings that looked just like jewels. The word Anu Rupataha indicates that the colors matched nicely. Krishna likes to look nice. Om Ajnan Timirandasya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Spam Padanti Kam Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padekamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Sha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahaganath Raganatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Deen Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha, Gopika, Kanta, Radha, Kanta, Namostute, Tapta, Kanchana, Gaurangi, Adhe, Vrinda, Vineshwari, Vishabhanu, Sute, Devi, Pranamami, Hari, Priya, Pancha, Kalpa, Tarubhishya, Kripa, Sindhu, Pevacha, Padita, Nam, Bhavane, Bhyo, Vaishnavi, Bhyo, Namaho, Namaha. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nithananda Sri Advek Gadadhar Sivasari Gaura Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare hmm. So the ladies are showing such emotional love appreciation others are offering wonderful gifts. But one rascal, he can't understand. He's so attached to his service to the king and he thinks the king, Kamsa, he's there. I guess he's just like Kamsa. But you know, you know who that person is who, was, who got a haircut by uh, Krishna? His haircut was he got a haircut below the neck. <laughs> he lost. That's his last haircut. <laughs> he doesn't need any more now. So that that person is an interesting person because it mentions, I can't remember what Shastra, but I know I read it, that this person was the same person who found fault with Lord Ramachandra in Ramlila when, when the Lord was, after he had returned to Ayodhya, he would go in disguise amongst the population just to see what people were saying about him. And there was one house. He heard one loud voice. Man was chastising his wife. He said, I am not like Ram. Sita, she was unchaste and he took her back. But you, you have gone to a out all night. I don't know where you went. Therefore, I am not like Ram. I cannot take you back. And so he was chastising his wife like this. So he was finding fault also with Ram in the process of chastising his wife. 
So that same person took birth as this cloth merchant. <laughs> so what does that say? That well, one has a particular type of mentality. One may carry that mentality or do does carry that mentality life after life. So his nature was very critical. And it says that that critical nature, again, manifests itself in the same way against the Supreme Lord another time. And this time, Ram, of course, when he criticized Ram, just Ram just tolerated it and accepted it. But Krishna wasn't like that. <laughs> of course, the leelas are completely different and the mood is different. And he got the mercy. He got liberated from his bad qualities. So this is an interesting point that we should learn from, that whatever is there in this life that we are attached to, that will cause us to take birth again. And that attachment, whatever it may be, even if it's a pinch of desire, Prabhupada says, if you're attached to one sweet ball, in other words, if you're attached in a material way, that will cause you to take birth again. So sometimes devotees use this one Shastric verse to justify the fact that they cannot come to the stage of pure devotional sum. Suchinam simbatam gehe yoga brasta prajayate. And Krishna says in the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, towards the end of the chapter, that one who, who somehow or other falls short of pure devotional service will again have the opportunity to take birth in a very good situation, merchants or pious family, and we'll have the opportunity to pick up where they left off in the previous life. But that's concessionary. It's not actually the goal. The goal is to finish up in this life. And that is the power of pure devotional service. So one should aspire only for pure devotional service. One should not accept anything less because by aspiring for pure devotional service, that desire will manifest within one's heart. And one will be able have to have the opportunities to execute pure devotional service. But if one somehow or other, sometimes they say, well, I'm too fallen. I'm not able to come up to the highest standard of spiritual practice, pure devotional service. Therefore, let me maintain whatever I can do and then... But Prabhupada cautions us that in a very strict way. He says, whatever kept you back in this life, you will have to face in your next life also. And that means that may cause us again to go not only another life, but may go down from there. Because that means whatever attachments or affections or what we say principles of material tendencies are still left within the mind and the heart of the conditioned soul at the time of death will cause one to take birth again and again. Mitche Mayada Basse Kachyo Habu Bubu Vajiv Krishna Das E Vishwash Kolina Dukanai. Don't do it. Bhakti Vinota course is you know, this is just a constant wave of material uh, suffering from Kardanum, Guna Sangha, So Shadasa Joni, Janmishu, from the highest planet, even if one gets. And Prabhupada was very understanding of the practice of many of his disciples. So he cautioned us you know, don't try to somehow or other find some nice position in this material world. You know, try to go back home back to Godhead or try to qualify yourself to go home back to Godhead and he made a very strong statement twice he said many he said the word many many of my disciples will reach Swarga Loka 
Now, that's not very enlivening, is it? I mean, some persons might think, well, Swarga Loka, that's the heavenly planets. There's a lot of material happiness, very little material suffering. And, you know, the birth is much, much longer than what is on this earthly realm. So it's not so bad. But after one's pious activities run out, one expends that because it explains that pious activities and devotional credits manifested in the material realm will, will gradually, will give a chance, but can also gradually push one back. And one will have to again take birth in the material realm, this realm, and again struggle. So, therefore, one should be very introspective. That's the very, that's the word we use, introspective, to see what attachments or what desires I still have and how to weed that out. Therefore, a devotee is always very uh, introspective, and yeah, that's the word, to see what am I attached to. And this, attachments are so subtle because if you're attached to name or fame or if you're attached to you know the subtle aspects of pride such as you know it's, what is that uh, distinction adoration and profit like that I can I want something from my execution of devotional service whatever you want if you want something other than the process of pure devotional service, which is ayabila sita sunya, jnana karmana avritam, anukulena krishna silanam bhakti uttama. If one wants, still wants to somehow or other find some position or some situation in the material world for personal satisfaction or profit, then that is less than pure devotional service. Because that verse by Srila Rupa Goswami gives us the foundation of what we should aspire for. And that is to try to please Krishna in the execution of devotional service without any desire for gain through that execution of service or any profit on any level. And you know, Krishna will also reciprocate with his devotees by re by giving them what we say profit he may give you a nice position he may give you nice followers he may also allow others to glorify you like that but if you see that as the result of your devotional service and therefore take what we say um, you see that as the success of your devotional service, then, then that is a type of attachment. We see there's one thing, it's called, uh, what is that? Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains. Um, the last two words, ragini is the second word. What is the first word? Huh? Taranga rangini. That seeing the benefits that one gets in devotional service as one's spiritual advancement. <laughs> in other words, if you get profit, position, followers, whatever, Lakshmi, anything, these are just, these are meant to be used in the service of the Lord. And not simply taken as one's, what we say, benefit for one's execution of devotional service. Sometimes a, a devotee will do that. And what will happen is he'll fail to can constantly purify the heart. Because constant purification of the heart is the process of devotional service. And receiving a lot of the external perks of devotional service can divert a person's attention to purification of the heart. One doesn't see the necessity of, of working on oneself and developing more and more the qualities and the enthusiasm that is ne necessary for pure devotional service like that. So that's the danger. That's the danger. So one sometimes cannot avoid 
what comes along by the grace of the Lord or by the execution of one's devotional service, but one should not be attached to that. One should be attached only to devotional service. And that is the power of devotional service, that when one is attached to the devotional service, then one is finding the happiness in the service, and that's, that's all one is satisfied. When Prahlad Maharaj was requested by Lord Dushringadev, the Lord was so grateful for Prahlad's bhakti and his, you know, his attachment to pure devotional service that uh, Lord Nishringadev wanted to reciprocate. And he requested Prahlad to take a benediction. Prahlad said, I am not a vanique. <laughs> I'm not a merchant. I don't worship you for something. But the Lord was persistent. And finally, Prahlad said, well, if you want, you can liberate my father, <laughs> Mr. Harani Kashipu. Uh, Sri Harani Kashipu in some verses, it's mentioned. <laughs> And uh, the Lord said, that is already done. <laughs> when he was dispatched, he was already, he got liberated simply by t being touched by the nails of Lord Nishringadev. So then there was no even need for that request. And then finally, Prahlad Maharaj said, well, if you want, then let me stay in this material world and preach. <laughs> let me be your instrument for showing mercy to the conditioned souls. So a devotee is always thinking, what can I do to satisfy the Lord? What can I do to satisfy the Lord's devotees? And that, that's, that's so fulfilling, that pure devotional service, or the process of executing pure devotional service is so satisfying that we have the example of uh, Kolavetra Sridhar, we were just there in Mayapur, the place where Kolavetya Sridhar, where Lord Chaitanya used to come daily to see Kolavetya and request him for banana cups and banana leaves and so many other banana items. And the Lord would harass him just to bring out his bhakti. <laughs> just to bring out his bhakti, he would harass him in a very, very, what we say, sweet way. And after some time, when the Lord pre presented himself as the Supreme Lord during the Mahaprakash Leela for 21 hours, he asked the devotees to call Sridhar. Sridhar came when he saw that same Nimai Pandit in the mood of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He fell flat and lost consciousness. He was overwhelmed. Finally, after retaining consciousness, the Lord was so pleased by Sridhar. And he wanted to glorify him. And he offered him anything. <laughs> Imagine if you were offered anything by the Lord. And that, that would be a test, right? If Krishna wanted to say, take anything you want. You could have a planet. He gave Dhruva Maharaj a planet to rule, right? <laughs> Not only a planet, but the planet that he resides on, the pole star, Dhruva Loka where the island of Sweta Dweep exists. And that's what kind of benediction he gave to Dhruva Maharaj. Imagine. So the Lord, you know, just wants to somehow or other show his appreciation and love for his devotee by reciprocating in different ways. Although the devotee doesn't want that, still, the Lord, that's the nature of the Lord. And so... Um, when Sridhar was, was offered so many things... The only thing, the only thing he responded to was, "My dear Lord, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy just seeing you every day. Just come by and harass me, buy my banana cups and banana leaves. Why are you offer me all these other things? These are just a, what we say, a distraction." <laughs> he saw any kind of material benediction, or any kind of material, anything in a material way, as simply being a distraction from his loving devotional service to the Lord. So Krishna will offer, and that's the nature of the Lord. And the Lord wants to reciprocate. He glorifies his devotee. He, and it's his love for his devotee. And sometimes he puts him in a position where others glorify him also. But the Lord, the devotee thinks this is simply the Lord's love 
And it's an opportunity to be used in the service of the Lord. So pure devotional service is so satisfying that one not, wants nothing but the opportunity to serve the Lord in any and all situations. Even in situations that are, what we say, not so pleasing, difficult situations. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, in his Saranagrati, one of his prayers, he says, he's speaking very rhetorically. And he's saying, uh, what is my happiness in devotional service? What is my ecstasies? What pleasure? What is? The, what causes me to have such pleasure in your service? And then, after mentioning him many things, he he ends. He says, actually, my dear Lord, the difficulties that I encounter in your devotional service, these are my ecstasies. So he, what is he saying? Is that then I can offer you something? It's the nature of the a person to try to avoid difficulties. It's just the nature. We always, everyone tries to avoid difficulties. It's just the way life is. It's just come because difficulties are foreign to the to soul's existence, and difficulties are are characteristics of the material energy. That's all. But a devotee will accept difficulties in relationship to devotional service as an opportunity to surrender to more and to offer more devotion to the Lord. And so, what Prabhupada says, don't try to look for difficulties. They'll come. <laughs> they come. That is the nature. Everyone has opportunities to get as many difficulties as you want. <laughs> Just, just stay engaged in devotional service. And these difficulties are actually opportunities for purification and opportunities to glorify the Lord. And we see in the life of Srila Prabhupada how many difficulties he went through. And he was a Mahabhagavat, a person who already was fixed in pure devotional service. But those difficulties were seen by Prabhupada as an opportunity to glorify the Lord not as some, you know, some purification. There was no need for purification for Srila Prabhupada. It was just opportunities to glorify the Lord by showing the world, Krishna wanted to show the world, that my devotee will serve me in any and every situation. Like that. So, of course, Prabhupada says, one should take risks for Krishna. He told that to Tamal Krishna Goswami in one discussion. And but, but then he cautioned him, but don't do something beyond which will jeopardize your your execution of devotional service. So one may take risks, but he cautioned us how to take a risk. One may not want to risk too much because if one forgets Krishna or falls from devotional service by taking unnecessary risks, then that that is not process. The process is one may take risks only to preach and, and spread Krishna consciousness like book distribution. It's a risk. It's a big risk because you're out there, you're face to face with the material energy and you're face to face with people who really don't really want what you have and you have to somehow or other convince them this is what they need to have. And it's a struggle many times and sometimes the atmosphere is very conducive and sometimes it's the opposite to the, to the execution of distributing books where there might be a lot of attractions just like even Harinam I notice of course we don't do much Harinam in India but in many western countries Harinam goes on and we do Harinam in, I, I won't mention what, I'm thinking of one country that when I do Harinam, it's like you just look only straightforward and at the devotees because the atmosphere around is very sensual, extremely sensual. And the people are also very, very sensual. And so it's like a real challenge. And then some of those persons who are, exposed to the Harinam, they jump in the Harinam <laughs> and they're chanting and dancing with you and that's nice, we want that but 
know, the ladies are scantily dressed and so many other things there. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a real risk. <laughs> it's a risk because if the mind gets disturbed and one somehow or other forgets Krishna, then that is, that is a subtle form of fall down, which can lead to later on, look what happened to Ajamil. We have the example of Ajamil, how he, he inadvertently, not, you know, purposely, but inadvertently got attracted to something that he wasn't attracted to, but somehow or other, he got attracted, and, and that, changed his whole life away from devotional service and became he became a gross and heavy materialist. So risks or accepting difficulties on behalf of Krishna should be done in such a way that one doesn't jeopardize one's advancement in spiritual life or one's remembrance of Krishna like that. So okay, so but back to the point here is that the process of Krishna, therefore a devotee, just like one devotee was telling me, uh, this person is living in Mayapur, they're a resident of Mayapur, and saying, I just can't wait to die. I just, I say, I can't wait for Krishna to come along and take me. In fact, I'm asking Krishna, let me die. I said, that's not the attitude. I said, it's nice, but the idea is you want to serve the Lord, and when the Lord is ready, He will, you know, take you. Not that you can say to Krishna, oh, I want to die. You still may have material desires yet, and then that will cause you again to come back in another. So, we don't really want to, to end this sojourn in this material body until we actually become purified. And Krishna will, will arrange that if we simply focus on pro the process of executing devotional service in according to the instructions of Srila Rupa Goswami and all the acharyas coming down from Srila Prabhupada, like that. So we have nothing to worry about. And so the idea is that one should, one should want to die to everything material in order to become prepared to leave the body in a pure devotional consciousness like that. Okay. And so to compromise or to consider that I can't make it, I'm a person who has so many attachments, I still, you know, I'm not in the best position for executing devotional service. That means one doesn't understand the mercy of the Lord and the mercy of the pure souls. That One should always aspire for pure devotional service because by aspiring for pure devotional service one gets attracted to pure devotional service and then when one gets attracted to pure devotional service one can easily execute that process nicely okay any questions or comments pure devotional service mixed devotional service Okay. Oh, okay. One question here. Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. How can we overcome our critical nature or can we engage it in Krishna service? How to overcome the critical nature? Don't get rid of it. Keep it. But use it for self-criticism. <laughs> You can have, you know, we, we can use that nature to look, find fault within ourselves and that way we can help us to see what we need to work on. So turn it inward, that's all. Find fault with yourself. And sometimes we say, you will have a lot of service. <laughs> we feel like that, if we... If we're looking for faults outside, then, you know, we fail to see the faults inside. And the, one of the faults inside is looking for faults outside. So, therefore, and of course we might explain it in a slightly different way, is that when you see, when you are, when you see faults in others, then also try to see the good qualities. 
reject what you see in terms of faults and try to focus on the good qualities because everyone, we might say, generally everyone has both. And then there's two kinds of animals, as Prabhupada would say, the bee, the honey bee, and the fly. So the fly goes for filthy places and the honey bee goes for the sweet honey. So when we see or developing a critical nature towards other, try to find, try to look for those good qualities like that. But as far as our critical nature is, then you can see, oh, take inventory. What do I need to work on? Self-criticism is a form of purification. It helps to um, see what we need to work on in our devotional service. Like that. In the Christian tradition, Christ would say, take the log out of your own eye before you try to take the splinter out of someone else's eye. <laughs> Christian statement. So, we, in other words, those who are finding fault with others have, as Bhakti Vinod, I'm sorry, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says, be, because I am honeycombed, he uses the word honeycombed, that means there's a lot there. A honeycombed with faults, I'm also finding fault with others. So, like that. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that to get his full mercy, one should, one should develop a taste for chanting and become a dosha darshi. A dosha darshi means one who doesn't see the faults of others like that. So work on yourself. If we each work on ourselves, we'll see how, how it changes others. They say if you want to change others, change yourself. Those who are busy changing others are just, you know, they're getting changed up. <laughs> it's a change up. That's his English slang to say you're being cheated. <laughs> You're cheating yourself if you're working on looking towards the faults of others. <laughs> Anything else? Any other comments, questions? <laughs> okay, thank you. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai.